Hello, students. This is Dr. K. Rajshekar from Shekhar IAS Academy. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about uh, the questions that have come in the UPSC mains paper 3 GS in, that was conducted a month ago in 2021 and uh, sorry, 2022 for 2021 mains exam. Okay, let's have a look at how questions have come in sense and technology paper. Uh, it is known that about three questions usually come. Uh, with little variation, sometimes you may get four questions coming from the science and technology part in this paper. And a uh, year before this, we have noticed that questions have come on cyber crimes, different types of cyber crimes, and also questions on science and technology in the field of agriculture. Okay, And then they asked about the question related to the specific developments that are taking place or that have taken place or helped in dealing with COVID-19 scenario and nanotechnology. So diverse type of questions that we have seen and more or less, we are noticing that biotechnology is one area that is actually coming uh, in almost year after year, either directly or indirectly, either its applications in agriculture area or applications in health sector, et cetera, like that. So even this time, uh, it was no different. But one question that have come, uh, maybe with little surprises, with a bit more technicalities uh, that are required here, is on S400. Okay. So if you look into those three questions that have come, you notice that there was a question on S-400. How S-400 air defense system is technically superior to any other system potentially available in the world, okay? Because there was so much of talk on S-400s that uh, you were purchasing from Russia and a comparison in uh, media, we have seen a lot of comparison on S-400 with uh, different type of or similar comparable systems that are available to us as an option to India, but India went with S-400. So they were asking how S-400 system is superior to them. Also, they asked a question on what are the research and development achievements in area of biotechnology, applied biotechnology. So applications wise in biotechnology, what areas that we have seen as developments and how will these achievements help to uplift the poorer sections of the society? We should be able to connect to those developments and how they can help the poorer sections of the society. Okay. And the third question is, again, a bit of a uh, surprise to some because uh, this was about a Nobel Prize that was given in 2014. But if you really think, although they have given question in the context of 2014 Nobel Prize, but they're talking about something that we are using day to day, which is bringing revolution in India and all over the world, that is LEDs. So although they put the question in the context of Nobel Prize given in 2014, but they are, they, what they're asking is to talk about LEDs, which is, I think, a very fundamental idea in physics that they're asking here, okay? Right, so more or less, I think S400 is something that was it came a bit, little bit as a, a surprise in terms of technicalities, but otherwise, uh, all these were in discussion, all these were more or less expected and came from core areas, okay? Right, let me briefly talk to you. How should be your answer like? So I'm going to give you some clues, some ideas on what should go into each of these answers? What should you focus on? Okay, this helps us because we'll have overlap uh, with respect to like biotechnology questions. And last year they asked biotechnology in COVID. So many things that we are going to write here also related to COVID are dealing with pandemics like that or infections spreading like that. Okay, right. So let's start with the question on S400, air defense system related to S400. So look into the first different components of the question. They are, they are specifying that, how is S-400 defense technically superior? So what do you need to understand here? They're asking about technicalities of it and its superiority over other potentially available systems. So they are they may be aiming at things that were in comparison, like America was offering us a third, offering, offering us Patriot, or in the news we have seen from Israel, uh, Cyberdome. So those type of things that you can compare it with. But, you know, we have to finish this question 150 words, not too much of a scope for getting into too many details here. And you, uh, we know that people come from different backgrounds. You don't have to be technically expert in discussing about all these different aspects. So what is needed here is uh, being able to briefly talk about the versatility of S-400 and how it is better compared to American Thad and Patriot. And all we have to understand is we don't have all technical details you know clearly uh, you know given up officially given up so some of them are predictions so different sources do talk about slightly different things here but without worrying about without getting into the nits and grits of it i think what we have to focus on the q 
key ideas or key features of S-400 and how this is better than missile systems like American Thar system and the PAC system, etc. Okay, right. So for such a question, you have to first of all talk about in what context S-400 was being discussed recently and what it is. S-400 is Russia's air defense missile system. It's Russia's air defense missile system. This is used in protecting our, you know, atmosphere, okay, from our country, from the threats coming from the enemies, okay? How do you protect yourself? So this is a defense system. We have been developing a defense system indigenously, but meanwhile, to fill the gaps, given the threats that we have from both China and Pakistan, to improve this national security, we decided to purchase S-400s, five squadrons of S-400s, at a cost of about $5.5 billion almost, 2018 India decided to have. In response to that, we know that USA uh, warned us with certain uh, claims, certain uh, sanctions that would happen, okay? In case if you go with it, that's an agreement that uh, you can make a mention here that uh, US decided, but India went with S-400 for following reasons, you can mention that. What are they? It's a long range surface to air missile system. So here, the range of missiles that can be shooted into the air, protecting any incoming problems. At what range? About 400 kilometer range. At 400 kilometer range. Okay. Also, they're talking about at what altitude. We'll compare that in the, with Pac-3, at what altitude and why it is better. Okay. But uh, within the 400 kilometer range, that it can hit targets. And they say that even 600 kilometer range is a scanning area. You can see things that are coming in the 600 kilometer range and hit the targets at 400 kilometer range, okay? And almost all sorts of aerial attacks. It's not just about incoming missiles. It's not just about ballistic missiles. It's also about cruise missiles and not just about missiles, but drones, rockets, fighter jets. It has a range of things that it can shoot down, okay? And also it has capability to track radars, location of different radars that are from the enemy side also it can, because you can plan sending your own missiles during the war. And on top of that is it is multi-directional, okay? So it can fire missiles in any direction. You'll see how that is important, how that is different from American Russians. And it can be fired from any terrain. It can choose any terrain to fire these type of things. And they say that assembling of these will take very short time, about five minutes. Of course, in real scenarios, it may be different, but in the media that we have seen comparison for about five minutes. And it is very difficult to detect and get destroyed. So it is more safer. Right? And cost-wise also, it looks to be cheaper than US equivalents. The numbers they say is about half, but there are many things that are into it that we cannot discuss here. Like S-400 doesn't come with you know, long-term service, et cetera, where Americans have that package. So cost may not be exactly comparable, but overall cost-wise, it seems to be more economic compared to American versions. Okay, so in American versions, American third terminal high altitude area defense that was quite compared with S-400, you can give a comparison with that. This is also anti-missile system, but it hits the targets within 200 kilometers compared to 400 kilometers for S-400, okay? You can mention about that. And then it is meant for shooting targets at very high altitudes, minimum 40 to 50 kilometers. What is the problem with that? So you are not able to deal with those that are below 40, 50 kilometers, like you talk about fighter jets or you know, things that come like your drones, et cetera. They cannot be... Uh, and they cannot be targeted using American cars. So it is not suitable for that. It's mostly suitable for ballistic missiles with a different range. Okay, cruise missiles, which also usually fly, fly low, are not a good target for American car. And it's a one-dimensional system, meaning you can fire, you know, in one direction, fire only one type of missile, where S-400 is quite versatile. It can actually fire multiple missiles in multiple directions at a given point of time. Okay, you can also make a comparison with the uh, American Patriot, American Patriot, which is known as PAC-3 or Patriot Advanced Capability 3 or PAC-3 systems. What do they do? They can target aircrafts along with ballistic missiles, like THAAD. Okay. So, but there are other shortcomings in PAC-3. PAC They're single directional. Again, you have to move it to a different direction depending on where the threat is coming from, which is time taking. And then PAC-3 has the ability to intercept aerial targets in the range of 180 kilometers and they can shoot down the targets with ballistic missiles at 100, 100 kilometer range. Again, quite smaller compared to what S-400s can do. Then the Russian air defense system can also down targets at as low as 10 meters, as high as 30 kilometers. Some of them, because Russian S-400 seems to have multiples of 
about four different types of missile categories that they can use to use in targeting enemy's missiles. So here yeah, they can be they can go anywhere from 10 meters to 30 kilometers as per some of the uh, news reports that talk. Okay, whereas for Pac-3, it is at least 50 meters and 25 kilometers, more narrower range compared to the AS-400. Okay, and also they talk about, I know, I don't, we already over the space, you may not have space to talk about, those things I've already discussed are enough, but if you manage to write, then they also talk about at what speed the incoming, incoming missiles, okay, can be handled by S-400 system. They can handle things that are going at speed of 17 kilometer per hour, whereas Pac-3 handles at half of that. Eight kilometer per hour. Okay, and also we talked about setting up time about five minutes in a, the best and optimal situation, and about twenty five minutes for the patriot. So it takes more time to set it up. Okay, so overall, what should be your verdict here? Because question is clearly asking that it is superior. The themselves are stating that it is superior. So you have to talk about the positive on the positive note of S four hundred. Otherwise, there are shortcomings of S four hundred. Like it is operationally not tested, unlike the patriot and others. They're not operationally tested. We don't know how well it is going to perform in the real war situation. Okay, so uh, you can we can make a mention that, but it is asking the positive notes. So it is better to men, to conclude your answer saying that even the versatility of S four hundred and the different ranges working at different altitudes. Okay, and simultaneously it can handle it can tackle more than hundred different targets simultaneously. So given this uh, nature of S four hundred, definitely S four hundred is far better compared to this. Okay, another potential area to compare is uh, the Cyber Dome, but Cyber Dome is also has a shorter and narrower range compared to S400. Even you can make a mention in the window. Like that, technically, without making it too technical and making it more relevant to us to discuss and the needs of the country, this, should, this is how your answer should look like. Okay, right. Next, we'll move on to the question on biotechnology. What are the research and developmental achievements in applied biotechnology? Look at the question. There are two parts to it. The first part is, asking about achievements in applied biotechnology. Second part, how these achievements help uplift the poorer sections. We have 250 words here, bit more room to uh, discuss, okay? Here, uh, you can think about this type of structure for this answer. Again, give enough diversity to your answer. Don't try to stick to one particular area because I know we all are impacted by COVID, bombarded by a lot of information on COVID, but the thing is, uh, we have to talk about other areas as well because biotechnology is not just about health sector. Start with definition of biotechnology, like using any technology on living organisms to create products, processes that are beneficial to humans. That is what the goal of biotechnology. You can start with the biotechnology definition. Yes, indeed, it is true that a lot of achievements have happened. Even in India, we have seen a lot of advancement in the area of biotechnology. In what areas these achievements have taken place? Look into the health sector. And now, nowadays, we talk quite a bit about rapid test PCR, RT-PCR for uh, uh, COVID-19 problem, we talk about genome sequencing and rapid tests and PCR specifically have advanced diagnostics. We are able to now quickly with less amount of money, we are able to specifically diagnose this infectious problem. So we are able to quarantine people, isolate people and then you know minimize the spread of the infection. So you can talk about how diagnostics are revolutionizing this. Then vaccines, this is a big achievement. We have been noticing that India is at the forefront in uh, creating vaccines. Uh, like either it was previously hepatitis A, hepatitis B vaccine, two years ago, vaccine for typhoid from Bharat Biotech and uh, COVID vaccines. We have uh, Serum Institute of India, we have Bharat Biotech. Okay, those things are receiving, uh, you know, a lot of uh, uprise from society around the world because in time they could provide us vaccines which are providing great protection to people, especially to vulnerable people. You can make a mention about that. You will not have much enough, much room for discussion on this. You just have to give examples. Okay, mention the area and examples. Talk about COVID-19 vaccines like Bharat Biotech vaccine. Or here it is not specific to India. You can give examples of even vaccines from Johnson & Johnson, Moderna, etc. Okay, overall, take a couple of examples here. And your drugs, of course, we are still running behind in fighting the COVID-19 treatment-wise. Uh, but yes, monoclonal antibodies, antibodies that specifically prevent viral from spreading inside your body. So such monoclonal antibodies are discoveries that have come, or inventions that have come from the biotechnology field. Okay, so they specifically act on the spike protein, for example, you can talk about it. Like there are many biotherapeutics, like enzymes, proteins with ability to deal with infection are, uh, are being created. 
okay they are definitely revolutionizing there more here stem cell technology stem cell treatments lot of room here genome editing controversial but we are able to specifically target like maybe genetic uh, genetic modifications or uh, mutation genetic mutations that are causing deadly genetic problems where there is no other scope then using crispr cas9 like tools to specifically revert that mutation is also possible so lot of scope here but as i was telling you diversity add diversity to your answer talk about agriculture many crops with desirable features gm crops genetically modified crops even traditionally you know uh, crops that have been uh, created through breeding cross breeding right so those type of things are also possible here we are making crops which are resistant to environmental stresses okay like water uh, uh, lack of water resources so you talk about frosting conditions you can talk about salty environments so like that we are able to make crops with desirable features with high yielding varieties disease resistant varieties you can make a mention about that. and also bio fertilizers bio pesticides uh, you know these are ways you know more environmental friendly way we can deal with the problems of plants and crops thereby reducing the burden on environment similarly tissue culture you can talk about you can multiply plants in less time and thereby getting the uh, benefit of using technology to speed up the way we select better varieties and multiply it in shorter duration in the lab labels next food industries we know that fermentation is a very big thing several industries survive on fermentation process like cheese sauce acids juices etc so that is all coming from biotechnology again and related fields then improving taste increasing shelf life changing composition so less cholesterol less lactose because people are intolerant to them or it is unhealthy to us when we take cholesterol like that so those modifications are becoming possible with back biotechnology then environment dealing with pollution like oil eating bacteria plastic eating microbes are coming up with their identified not at commercialized now we are also able to tackle environmental problems like pollution problems water pollution air pollution etc and uh, industrial pollution using biotechnologically designed gm varieties or selected varieties which naturally exist in right combinations so bioremediation process you can make mention these are the achievements in various sectors that are becoming possible with biotechnology so second half of the question where you have to talk about uplifting the poorer sections here yeah, uh, how this is going to help poorer sections we have to make connections here first of all how biotechnology is helping all those examples we talked about how are they helping they are focusing on alleviating poverty making health more affordable things okay and making water pure purified water availability at less cost so this is have a great impact because rich can afford to have it whatever with the cost is but poor people cannot so we are with competition with more invention we are able to bring the cost of it and make it more affordable more accessible to public that is what you have to focus here alleviating the poverty is possible with this by providing proper income ensuring food security we have talked about gm crops they are making it you know uh, possible to grow them in the lands which was not possible before with less investments you can talk about them so sustainable agriculture is possible with biotechnology and we are able to improve health with the help of biotechnology based on diagnostics vaccines your treatments initially they are expensive but eventually they'll become cheaper we also have intellectual property system in india where methods are there to reduce the cost eventually okay so you can focus on more yield with the crops that are designed like this so more income to poor farmers and less inputs because like disease resistant crops we don't need to give more inputs for that okay so more savings and less pollution so not only income and also it reducing this or increasing the savings less healthier environment okay so we are reducing burden on pollution by not using too many fertilizers too many pesticides so again useful for poor section because they they feel the, the huge burden in investments in agriculture and given agrarian society we we do experience that and poorer people have larger impact from this so that would greatly help and also i was telling you about this already access to purified water purified water is an essential thing to us but nobody uh, people at poorer uh, sections people from poorer sections cannot afford to have those 10 15000 you know water filters like rv filters etc there are companies which are coming up with more economic options to purified water if they are happening to live in the areas where the industries are there agricultural runoffs are there so they are highly impacted from pollution so we can definitely provide an alternative to them by uh, reducing uh, the cost that it takes for purified water 
And similarly, biofuels, we have seen National Biofuel Policy 2018, uh, which uh, she's providing provisions to farmers where they can surplus food can be sent to biofuel sector. So this provides more assured income to the farmers. Similarly, affordable vaccines, medicines, and you can also make mention food supplements for addressing malnutrition problem in India. Ready to use food supplements are being created, identifying proper nutrition in proper combination. Biotechnology is also helping addressing this through the government programs. Okay, probiotics also are gaining a lot of attention. Biotechnology helps in mixing up different microorganisms that are good for our digestive system, improve our immunity. That is also is one of the benefit like to either rich or poor people in the same manner. Okay, and more industries because of biotechnology, more employment, more economic growth in the country, helping poorer sections as well. Like that, you can talk about uh, several ideas here. I know I will not have enough room to discuss all of these, but I wanted to provide you ideas even for future you know, exams where you know what type of things you can talk about with respect to biotechnology. Right. This is about the biotechnology part. The last question is Nobel Prize in Physics 2014 was jointly awarded to Akasaki, Amano, and Nakamura for invention of blue LEDs in 1990s. Okay, the main question is, this is a background, main question is, how has this achievement impacted everyday life of human beings? How is it impacted positively? Okay, using blue LEDs, white light can be created in a new way. So look at this. This is from uh, Nobel uh, website, Nobel Prize website, they, they clearly talked about impact of LEDs. These are the sources that where you can learn information. Okay, you can do that for other things. Focus on different Nobel Prize inventions and how this is impacting us. This is normally discussed as part of the Nobel uh, Prize committees, you know, in website. Okay, you can have a look at that. So blue LEDs, light can be created in a new way because we already had red, green light emitting diodes, but without blue, you cannot create white light. So they, they could do that with the help of these blue LEDs. So it filled that gap. And triad of these three is making possible to have white light illuminating the world. That is the, the key idea behind and key importance and significance of this discovery. That is why they gave Nobel Prize to them. So impact wise to us, okay, uh, on everyday life. They emit, they emit bright white light and they're long lasting. So they have more shelf life and they're more energy efficient. And they are, they don't contain mercury, unlike the tube light versions of them where mercury had to be used and mercury getting in the environment was a big problem in them with in the absence of proper disposal in the country. Okay, so you can make a mention about that. They require less energy to emit light compared to the older light sources. So they don't consume more energy. They need less energy to provide same output. And they're becoming more and more efficient. Like it is called uh, lumen, they normally mentioned. They are now improved to have higher luminous flux okay per unit output of power like per watt so 300 luminous uh, or lumen for uh, one watt is possible compared to 16 light bulbs that are required and 70 fluorescent lamps that are required so compared to them we are able to manage that with one bulb okay so you can come you can see how uh, useful it is then uh, you can also talk about Reducing the earth resources for making these type of things, for making 16 light bulbs, 70 fluorescent labs, we utilize a lot of earth resources. We can save them as well in the manufacturing sense. You can make a mention about that. Then LEDs also are more long lasting. I was telling you about it for a comparison. LEDs can last for about one, one lakh hours as compared to 1,000 for the traditional incandescent bulbs and 10,000 for the fluorescent lamps. Then they're much cooler. They don't provide a lot of heat. And, and that is another problem to us, especially in summers. So LEDs are much cooler and they don't have a risk of burning your fingers. So they're safer. And government through Unnath Jyoti program, uh, it was providing LEDs to all uh, qualified people, eligible people in the country called the Ujala program or Unnath Jyoti program. Okay, so now LEDs are uh, reaching all corners of the country. And some examples that you can see, because uh, places like Uttar Pradesh, where there was no, uh, in many places, there was no connection to electricity. From there, they leapfrogged into having no electrical lighting to straight LED lightings. So such uh, revolution is taking place in India. And they're becoming more and more cheaper. They're sometimes, you know, they're more cheaper than the bread. They cost, they're costing about 50 rupees sometimes. That is cheaper than bread in some places. So in a way, we see light transformation happening in the country and also reduce the uh, energy usage and carbon dioxide emissions. 
like that it is impacting us on day to day these are some ideas related to that i hope this is useful to you so i wanted to discuss with you the the way that you can deal with such questions there is not much difference here except little focus on defense area with little bit of technical component related to that okay right yes all the best with your preparation we'll come up with more videos uh, that are helpful to you thank you